What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2008 W211 E63 AMG. Today on the E63 behind me, we're gonna be covering how to replace your front brakes. A couple of things to look for before you get started is inspecting your brakes visually seeing what kind of condition they're in, seeing how much meat is left on your pads. An easy way to tell if your rotors are going bad is simply by running your fingernail across the front of the face. If you have a lip on either end, either inboard or outboard, front or backside, and more than likely they're probably worn. In some extreme cases, you'll get some pulsating in your brakes when you press down on the brake pedal, especially under heavy braking. Just keep in mind though, also worn out front end suspension components can cause that as well. So a couple of things to look out for there. For the W211, we have a couple options available on fcpro.com. As you can see in front of me, we have the OE two-piece style rotors. These are from Brembo. Brembo is the original supplier for Mercedes-Benz, paired with some genuine pads, which again are also Brembo pads. You have your V&E option, which is a one and a half piece rotor with some Proto pads. These are a good track day, street day pad if you're looking for something in between. And you can also pair something up like these Zimmerman rotors, which are the more affordable price point out of the three. These are a single piece rotor. And beneath it, we have some EVC blue stuff pads, which are a great track day slash uh, racetrack pad, depending on what you're looking for. So we have a couple of different options available on the site. Make sure to check out what we have there. Now, before we get started on this DIY, let's talk about the tools we're gonna need for this job. And now for tools. For this DIY, we're gonna need a couple of tools, starting with some ratchets. I have a half inch drive, a 3 8 drive, and a quarter inch. With that, I have a 21 millimeter socket, we have a 13 millimeter socket, we have a five millimeter hex, and we have a T30. We also have a 17 millimeter socket for our lug bolts. We have two different hammers. We may have to hammer off the uh, old rotors. They're pretty rusty on there, so we'll see what happens. This smaller one is gonna be used along with our punch to drill out some pins that hold our pads in place. We have a half inch drive torque wrench, we also have a flathead screwdriver. And now for some nice to haves, we're gonna be using a brake pad spreader. This one does two sides at the same time. So for this car that's equipped with a six pot caliper, this will come in handy. We have a caliper hook. We have some ceramic paste from Liquid Molly. And we have our half inch electric impact, which will help with getting our wheel off. In addition to that, we also have a small wire brush to get some of the oxidation off of our hubs. And some pliers in case we need to pull out some of the old pins. Now we know what tools we're gonna to be using for this DIY, let's go ahead and get started. All right, before we get started on this brake DIY, something you always wanna check is the fluid level in your reservoir on the W211 that is located on the driver's side firewall. To get to it, we have a cover to remove. It's got two locking screws that you twist 90 degrees to unlock. Turn those counterclockwise to free them up. From there, you can lift up the panel, remove it if you'd like, just set it to the side. That's gonna give us access to our fluid reservoir. Now, the reason you wanna keep an eye on this is simply due to the fact that when you're doing a brake job and you're compressing the pistons back into the calipers, depending on if the fluid level has changed on your vehicle, the system may overpressurize itself and sometimes it'll cause a leak up here at the reservoir. So what you can do to avoid that is remove the cap, take some fluid out of the reservoir using a baster or a syringe or some sort of suction tool. Just leave it a little bit low, not low enough to get air into the system itself, but just low enough to where you can compress all the pistons that you're gonna be working with and not worry about overfilling and overspilling here. So for us, the vehicle is at a decent level. We have more than enough room to take up before we have to worry about anything, but we're gonna keep the cover off so we can keep an eye on it. With that being said, let's head over to the front and get started. All right, to get started, we're gonna start by removing our wheel. We have five 17 millimeter lug bolts that we're gonna to wanna to take off. So we'll grab our half inch impact, our 17 millimeter lug socket, and zap these off. All right, now with that off, we have a better view of where we're gonna be working. So I'm gonna grab a trash bin, just something to catch all the debris that I'm gonna be dropping here because we're working on the shop today. And then we'll go ahead and get started. To get started, we're gonna start by making sure that we can break free our rotor set screw. That way when we come to remove the rotor, that doesn't hang us up. 
So I'm gonna use the caliper in place. I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and just stick it in one of the veins. And then I'm gonna grab my T30 on my quarter inch ratchet and break that free. One thing I like to do with these Northeast cars that we have here is set the bit in place and give it a couple taps with the hammer just to break free any uh, rust or anything that may be binding it up. A couple taps. Now with that removed, we can go ahead and work on removing our brake pads so we can get our caliper ready for removal. As you can see, for those of you paying attention, we cleaned up our caliper before starting this brake job. Mainly I like to do that because I can spray my chemicals on here and brake clean. And I don't have to worry about damaging the finish on the rotors or the pads as we're gonna be replacing everything. So if you're gonna do the same at home, I recommend clean everything while it's on the old hardware still. That way when you put in your new stuff, you can put on a fresh, clean looking caliper. To get started on the passenger side, we're gonna begin by removing the brake pad wire sensor from the electrical connector. To do that, you're simply gonna grab it and wiggle it out. Pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about pulling out on the pad end. However, just note where it is located so that when you insert your pads, you have the notch for the wear sensor in the right location. Passenger side is gonna to be top right corner. With that freed up, we're gonna work on driving the pins out that hold our spring clip in place. So to do that, we're gonna grab a small punch. I have a quarter inch punch on me and a small hammer. So we'll work on starting those out. I like to use the big flat end of the punch first, and then I'll switch over to the fine end. These brakes are pretty crusty, so I'm gonna use my small pliers to pull the pins out. We're also gonna be replacing the hardware, and by that I mean the pins and the anti-rattle clip, so there'll be a link in the description below should you wanna do the same as us. So you can see it's a good thing we're replacing these because these are bent. These have been in there for quite a bit. They're probably original and they've seen some, some heavy braking. So we're gonna go ahead and replace them. Normally they are reusable though. And we can drive out our top pin. Now it should be pretty loose. And assuming it's not bent, it should come out no problem. This one looks nice. Here's our clip. Now we have the retaining pins removed and the anti-rattle clip. The next step is gonna to be to remove the center bolt that holds our pads in place. To do that, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket to get the 13 millimeter bolt out back. I'm gonna use a 13 on my 3 8 drive ratchet. And then before I pull the bolt all the way out, I simply just broke it free. I'm gonna take my small hammer and just give it a couple taps, just to kind of get this started, because with all the brake dust and road grime, they kind of get seized into place. Now that I saw that broke free a little bit, we can finish removing the 13 millimeter bolt. Set that to the side. If it's still too stuck, go ahead and reinsert the 13 millimeter bolt. Make sure you get a decent amount of threads on there. You don't want to goober up the threads either. Let's give it a couple more taps. There we go. All right. This is going to hang on with the caliper. Just make sure you set your 13 millimeter to the side. You can take your small wire brush, just gently scrape off some of the grime and corrosion that's stuck on here. All right. Now, before we go ahead and pull the pads out, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we're replacing both the pads and the rotors, and I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pry in between the pads and the rotor to just get the piston started back into the caliper. That way, when we remove the caliper from the knuckle here, we'll be able to fit our spreader tool a little bit easier. Now, this will be easier on a vehicle with more worn brakes. These we were put on not too long ago. We we're doing some R&D with the materials that are on here. So the pads still have a lot of life left, so it makes it just a little tight for this tool to get in there. So. I'm gonna to try to press them in as much as I can before we have to get in there with the tool.
Right now I'm just prying against the pads themselves. I haven't even gone and touched the rotor yet. So if you're just doing a pad replacement, you can pry on the pads. All right, that should give us more than enough room. We'll go ahead and pull the pads out, but we're gonna hang on to them because we're gonna use them with our caliper tool to press our pistons back in. So don't throw them out just yet. There's one. Try to pry against the old hardware before you pry in your caliper. These are pretty rough shapes, so we're not too worried about marring up the paint, but just because they're ugly doesn't mean you should treat them poorly. All right, with our old pads out, now we can work on freeing up the caliper from the carrier and hanging it off to the side. All right, now we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove our caliper so that we can get to the next component being our rotor. So to do that, we have two 21 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper to the carrier. I'm gonna use my half inch drive ratchet with my 21 millimeter socket. And we'll work on breaking those free. There's one. There's two. And then I'm gonna switch over to my 3 8 drive ratchet just because it's a little bit lighter and it'll make backing those out a little bit quicker. You can also use an electric ratchet if you have one handy. Let me get my caliper hook situated before I pull that last 21 millimeter out. It's gonna hang it off the upper control arm here. All right. Now we can go ahead and hook our caliper off to the side and I'll be more than happy there. With that off, now let's work on removing our rotor. As you remember earlier, we went ahead and removed the set screw. Now I already know these are gonna be seized on there, so I'm gonna grab one lug bolt and just thread it back in. That way we avoid crushing our feet or our hands when, they fall, when it falls off. And then we'll grab a big hammer, give it a couple whacks and get that off. As you saw, I just moved my caliper over so I can get some more room to swing, but we can go ahead and put it back where we had it. Now we can go ahead and remove this lug bolt and get our rotor off. We're gonna go ahead and apply a liquid moly ceramic paste. The idea is to put this where the rotor sits on our hub. That way next time someone does breaks, they don't have to go as ham with the hammer as we did today. Any excess after we put the rotor on, we can wipe off. Now I'm just spreading what I put on. The main part, I'm not adding more material. Extra where the set screw goes. Those are always tricky, especially if you live in the Northeast like we do. All right, before we go ahead and put our rotor back on, we're gonna go ahead and compress the pistons in for the new brake pads, and then we'll go ahead and slap the rotor on. Now that our hub is ready to go, before we put on our new rotor, while we have all the space to work on, we're gonna go ahead and finish compressing those pistons all the way back in. Now we did a really good job with the flathead screwdriver and prying back on the old pads, but we're gonna double check by using our tool. So. I'm gonna load the old pads back into place. Just remember earlier, I told you to hang on to them. That's for this very reason here. There's our inboard and outboard pad. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these pads aren't that old. They still have a lot of meat on them. So you may see me struggle a bit on compressing the piston when I get that tool in there, but we'll give it our best shot. All right, got that situated in a decent spot. You wanna keep it obviously even, so the more in the middle you can get it, the better. All right, we've gotten that in a bit. Let's reposition this tool. More even for us here. All right, 
that should be more than enough to be able to fit our new pads on to our new rotor. So let's go ahead and take those off. We're gonna hang on to these in case we need to come back and do this one more time. We're gonna go ahead and give the inside of our caliper a light wipe, especially where our pads sit. Make sure nothing looks funny. Just give it a light clean. You can obviously spend a lot more time on this. Take the calipers off, clean them in full, whatever you like. All right. Now, before we go ahead and handle our new shiny rotor, I'm gonna go ahead and get some fresh gloves on. As these two have a special coating on them, you don't wanna hit them with brake cleaner. So I'm gonna put some fresh gloves on, we'll mount the rotor on and go from there. All right, now we can go ahead and install our rotor. If you are running the Brembo's like we are, these come with a new set screw. Otherwise, there'll be a link in the description below if you wanna replace all your set screws. Before I put that set screw in, I like to add a little bit of paste to where it sits, just because I have had to drill out too many set screws in the past to want to deal with that again. We're going to go ahead and torque those down to eight Newton meters. Beautiful. That's all that needs. I'll encase that. And the liquid molly ceramic paste would be beautiful. Now that we have that situated, we can go ahead and reinstall our brake caliper. All right, baby. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our caliper off the carrier hook. If we're gonna take this off, don't leave it riding in there. And we'll get our 221 millimeters started by hand. All right, now that they're both started by hand, I'm gonna use a 21 on my 3.8 drive ratchet just so I can quickly snug them up. And now we're gonna grab our 21 millimeter socket, our half inch socket on our torque wrench. I'm ready to torque these down to 180 Newton meters. All right, with our caliper locked into place, so we can go ahead and feed in our new pads. What I like to do before I feed the outboard pad in is I like to clip in my wear sensor ahead of time. Simply goes into the notched area of the brake pad. Beautiful. With that situated, we can go ahead and feed it in. Again, the one with the sensor was the outboard pad. You want to kind of line it up so that you can look through and see the opening for the pins. So if you can't see through, then the pad is either too far in or too far out. That should be a good starting point. Now we can go ahead and take our pin and our clip. I like to start with the top first. Feed the pin in. Feed it through the clip as best as you can. And now on this side we have that wear sensor locator or socket I should say. So we're going to use our punch from earlier and our hammer and drive our pin the rest of the way in. All right. Now with that in place, the pads are somewhat gonna stay in. We don't have to worry about them moving too much on us. We can go ahead and take our center bolt and feed that back through. 
give it a couple taps to bottom it out. With our center bolt tapped in all the way, we can go ahead and start our 13 millimeter bolt on the other end. Start that by hand. And then we want to go ahead and torque that to 30 newton meters. And also go ahead and plug in our brake sensor while we're up here. And then you can tuck the sensor into the little tab here for the metal clip. And now we can feed our bottom pin in while pushing down on the clip. You can see there our pad isn't quite lined up. Take our flathead screwdriver, just encourage it a little bit. I'm gonna pry it against the rotor if possible. I don't wanna mar up these poor calipers more than I need to, but let's see. Gently there. And there you have it, my good people. We are one step closer to wrapping up this DIY. All right, with our caliper on, our hub all tightened up, our rotor all situated, let's go ahead and put our wheel back on. And we'll start our five 17 millimeter lugs by hand. We'll snug them up with the impact and then we'll lower the car down and torque them down. All right, with those snugged up, let's go ahead and get the car on the ground and then we'll torque the lug bolts down. All right, with our 17 on our torque wrench, we're gonna go ahead and torque our five lug bolts down to 135 Newton meters. Make sure you torque them down in a cross pattern. Boom, baby. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. Overall, a pretty straightforward job, brake job on the W211, and a nice upgrade going back to the two-piece rotors. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this video and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.